in getting it out. Go! Like a, right off the bat. They love this part. Hi, Peter Charles here of Hooked Life Fly Fishing. And lately I've been talking about warm water fishing, uh, pan fishing, that sort of thing, smallmouth bass, and I thought, you know what, let's take a look at a modification of a basic pattern, the gurgler, and I call it the baby gurgler, something that uh, pan fish and small bass might take. And the thing about this fly is that when you use it, uh, it's best used in, you know, glassy conditions, you know, early morning, late evening, and it's going to make just this imperceptible wake across the water. It doesn't make much of a wake at all. It looks like a very small animal or large insect swimming and it, and it really disturbs very little so when you've got pressured fish that are rather fussy and they've seen every jitterbug and hula popper imaginable out there you might want something that's very subtle especially in glassy conditions and the baby gurgler just does that it's just a little tiny wake as you bring it across the water it looks really like a little insect a big insect or a little animal that's swimming so let's get started uh, with the uh, baby gurgler and take a look at what uh, we're using for material. Uh, for the hook, it's a size 8 dry fly hook. Go with a light hook uh, because the, uh, you want a light wire to help keep this thing up. If you used a very heavy gauge hook like a, a wet fly hook, it would drag it under. Our thread is a black 8 aught in vivus. Our tail is a grizzly uh, chickaboo. The, uh, body, uh, the top of the body is black foam. The body is black chenille, and this is the, the fine stuff. And, and the legs are uh, this uh, silicone variegated style. Uh, I would use something that's kind of um, striking in, in color difference between, say, black and this one is sort of a, uh, almost like a sage color. You know, or you could go with something bright like chartreuse, either way. So let's get started. Start the thread well back. We're going to leave that front of that hook um, un uh, bare for the moment because we'll need that space. Bring it all the way back to the beginning of the gape. Now we're going to take our uh, chickaboo feather here. I'm going to peel off a good chunk of it. Pinch loop it on top. There we go. Make sure it stays in put place. Now we're going to take our foam here, and this is roughly, oh, about an inch and a half by a quarter inch uh, in size. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it so as to narrow the, uh, the tie-in point, because we don't want that too bulky. And you can see what I've done with it here. And this gives us a chance to get this tied in without a ton of bulk. Do some loose wraps. We want this thing to stay on top. I'll bring this forward and then bring it back, tightening up. And try not to disturb the tail. Keep checking on the tail to make sure it stayed put. And the other thing I'll do is I'll just bring it back again. You want to make sure you've got enough space to tie in the um, the uh, chenille. Now we got a piece of chenille. Okay, we just tie it in. Lock it in place. Bring your thread forward. Okay, you can see that my foam has moved a little bit, so take a moment to put it into place. Then bring your chenille forward. And stop right where we started the thread. And put one wrap in here. And now I'm just going to attach hackle pliers to this. So I'm going to take some hackle pliers and 
it what it does it adds some weight to the chenille so when I'm fiddling with the the rubber legs the chenille stays put because the tendency for it to all move around if you don't do that so what we're going to do is going to take one of these strands of silicone legs and I'm going to double it try and get the lengths the same it's fiddly stuff to use there we go cut it now we have a leg for each size side I should say pick about the middle spot on the leg and just pinch loop that carefully in place very soft wraps to start now we move over to the other side again try and get it even very gentle pinch loop to start it's kind of normal that these legs start uh, getting disturbed out of position that's typical move them back into place there we go it's about right so now they're sort of ready to go we've got some soft wraps in there and I'm going to take a bit of CA glue just put a doll dollop right at the joint now you don't have to wrap this very tightly in fact just because we put the glue there we don't have to get fussy so we got a wrap in front and a wrap just get those front legs to go into position now we'll very carefully tie this off and try not to trap our legs there we go now we're going to fold over our foam and it helps to push those legs back out of the way when you do this try not to get glue on your fingers again it's start off with a soft wrap and tighten up pull into position okay now we've got this in place the legs are in pretty good shape we have a choice here if I just trim that uh, foam off as it stands right now it will um, do the job it will produce a very subtle wake uh, it will um, sit right in the surface film it will be barely breaking the surface now if I fold this back like this and create a bit of a lip and So what I've done here is I've made a lip and then I come in with my scissors and cut this off. So what I've done with that now by putting that sort of head to it, I've increased its ability to float. It will float a little bit more nose up and I'll push a little bit more water. And to help further that along, I can start putting some half hitches in here which will serve to push that up away from the eye of the hook so we can actually get our thread in there. So a half a dozen in there will do and you'll eventually push that head all the way back and it'll make that bulge at the front, the head we'll call it, stick up a bit. And then we can trim off our thread Now all we have to do is come in here, put a drop of head cement in here to hold it, and there's our baby gurgler. Now the one thing you might want to do, and this is strictly up to you, is for those back legs just take a bit off of them. And that reduces the chances of them fouling on the hook. Because if you've used uh, poppers that you buy at the, the fly shop, they have wrong, long rubber legs, <clears throat> Sorry, when you cast them and start bringing them back, you'll find some of the rubber legs are, are fouled, 
around the gape of the hook. And so they're, they're next to useless. So if you keep these a little on the short side, and uh, as I say, you can um, reduce them to make them look a little bit more symmetrical if you want. By keeping them not too long, they, they are more spiky. And so when you pull on the strip, they'll collapse. And then as soon as you back off the tension, they'll spring out and then they'll collapse, spring out. And that gives it a little bit more uh, life when it's in the water. So there, there's our baby gurgler. And as I say, that front head is optional. You can add it or leave it off. Uh, I've done it both ways. Um, and this version tends to float a little higher, push a little bit more water. And if you don't fold it back and you just cut it off at that point, it'll sit right in the surface film. So I'll leave that choice. You can might do one of each and see what you like best when you fish them. Uh, that would be my suggestion. But there's our um, baby gurgler, uh, great panfish fly, and also small bass will take it too. Um, if you've ever been out with light tackle fishing for panfish and all of a sudden you see the big wake coming towards your little fly, you'd be surprised how big a largemouth will take something like that. You think they only go after the big stuff? I've had them take that too. Uh, little poppers and other small flies and uh, you're bringing across the surface of the water and this big mouth comes up and inhales it. That's always good to get the old ticker going. Anyway, give it a try, the baby gurgler. Cheers. Got it. Oh.